the beachfront for illegal drag racing, police concentrated on anti-social behaviour. Suspect cars and even a wedding vehicle were pulled over and ordered to undergo thorough checks at a specially set up compound. This type of behaviour won't be tolerated by the police service. Working with roads and traffic authority inspectors and officers from the Environment Protection Agency, each car was carefully examined. Within the first hour, almost 20 cars had been checked. Every one of them had a defect. If it's a major matter, such as brakes or something like that, the car will be defected and removed from here on a tow truck. Police say apart from taking these cars off the road temporarily, the operation is an intelligence gathering exercise which will be ongoing in a bid to stop illegal street racing. Police say operations like this will continue across the metropolitan area. Simon Boda, National 9 News. The ACTU has launched a national campaign to protect employees from what's been described as workplace killing fields. Each year more than 500 people die on the job and the unions say their bosses are to blame. Frances Kavanagh lost her nine-year-old daughter Maggie in an accident which can only be described as horrific. The young girl was with her best friend and her friend's father at Sydney University when in a veterinary laboratory she became caught up in a horse treadmill. There are those who say they can't afford to make the changes, which leaves me wondering if they have any idea of what a huge piece of machinery can do to a child's body. I do. I had to identify my daughter's broken body at the morgue. Mrs Kavanagh helped launch the ACTU's workplace safety campaign alongside others whose loved ones died in workplace accidents. 54-year-old John Horvath was driving an earth compactor on Melbourne's southeastern arterial just centimetres from an embankment. The vehicle toppled over, crushing Mr Horvath. His son-in-law claims there were insufficient barricades. The union movement conducted a workers' survey and found that safety rated alongside pay and job security as issues of most concern. But the ACTU says sadly employers in their quest for profits don't have the same priorities. A hotline will run from tomorrow until Wednesday for people concerned about workplace safety. Helen Ballard, National 9 News. In the United States, a 500 metre high transmission tower has crashed to the ground, killing three workers and leaving Dallas suburbs without electricity. A gust of wind caused a workman's machine to fall, hitting support wires and causing the structure to collapse. Power lines were snapped in the crash, sparking nearby bushfires. There's been a very public snub for Princess Diana, with Mikhail Gorbachev failing to appear at a ceremony honouring her humanitarian work former Soviet president was supposed to present the award. I think that uh, the work that uh, the princess has done with regard to uh, both uh, uh, children and the needy has been considered by the people in the committee has been uh, worthwhile mentioning and recognizing. Despite the snub, Diana received an enthusiastic welcome with many Italians gathering for a glimpse of the princess. In Washington, there's been a somber reminder about the devastating effect of the AIDS virus. A huge quilt has been laid out to honour more than 70,000 victims. The AIDS quilt was unfurled possibly for the last time. Stretching nearly two kilometres, this sombre reminder of those claimed by AIDS is getting too big. The quilt covered Washington's National Mall. This is like walking through a graveyard. This man came to find the names of 38 friends. And there's not that many friends left. I mean, I can't find anybody to go to movies with on Saturday night. They're all dead. 70,000 names are sewn into the quilt. Volunteers are reading each and every one. George Martin, Roger Wall. As poignant as the quilt is, it represents just a fraction of the 5.8 million people worldwide who have died of the disease. You kind of realize that there's nothing stopping it from being you. President Bill Clinton became the first US president to personally view the quilt inside the Capitol building close by. Politicians were urged to do more from activists like Liz Taylor. And I love you, and God bless you. An estimated three quarters of a million people will view the quilt over the next few days. Tonight, some of them carried candles through the US Capitol to show support for those still coping with the disease. In the United States, Mark Burroughs, National 9 News. Ken Sutcliffe with sport is next, and our cricketers haven't fared too well. Ian, very difficult to win a test in, in uh, India these days. We'll have that, and Aussie Mark Bosnich upsets British soccer fans. Continue. 
India has coasted to victory against Australia in the one-off cricket test in Delhi. The Aussies were all out for 234, despite an unconquered 67 from Steve Waugh. Kumble took five wickets. India got the required runs for the loss of three wickets. A four-day-old Delhi wicket, a slow bowler's heaven, a batsman's hell. Hogg bedeviled by Kumble to become the leg spinner's fourth victim. Steve Waugh, the only Australian able to tame the wicket's demons. Kumble is in the deep. And he can't stop it. Trapping rifle in front gave Kumble a five-wicket haul, but War refused to yield. This for his 50 and Australia's 200. McIntyre looked unlikely to contribute to the total, but the tail ender took up the fight, surviving over an hour until lunch before his time ran out after the break. Despite last-minute advice, McGrath didn't last long. Australia all out for 234, War an unbeaten 67, India needing just 56 to win. Rifle relished defending the small total, trapping first-inning century maker Mongia before beating Rathor. Ball them all the way through. McGrath did the same to Tendulkar, sending Ball tremors through India. Sensation here at the Kotla, Tendulkar's gone. Three for 26. The prospect of an unlikely victory appealed to Taylor. But Azaruddin and Ganguly steered the home team to a seven-wicket win. India's first test victory against Australia since 1981. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. Not a good start to the one-day season for New South Wales, beaten by Western Australia at North Sydney Oval. The Blues made seven for 242. Corey Richards hammering a century. The Warriors replied with six for 246. Western Australia won the toss and put the brakes on in the opening 10 overs. But on a perfect wicket, it was only a matter of time before the air raids began. The run rate clocked in at just over four and over before Chiqui found Langer on the picket fence. And the first wicket goes down. One for 82 after 18. Corey Richards was all class in his cruise past 50. The Warriors filled four catches and were given a lesson from a young fan. We'll this one in the air. That'll go all the way. Yes, it will. Was it caught? WA eventually it's found some glue and out. one start. They can't drop this one. Richards clocked up triple figures. That's his hundred on debut. But the Blues got a bad case of the wobbles. They made seven for 242, a modest oh, total well on this small That's oval. Good, New captain Greg Matthews opened the bowling with his off spin, but yeah. Campbell and Langer didn't falter, putting on That's 92 for the first wicket That's a cracker. before Shane Lee yorked Campbell. That's the one they needed. The tension was almost tangible. The captain furious with the teammate, but delighted, very next ball. Langer gone for 54. Danger men Moody and Martin followed just got there, I'm... and by the 37th over the luck was really running with the blue. He's in trouble here. Baker gone, 5 for 166. The ingredients were there for a thrilling finish. But a former New South Welshman, Adam Gilchrist, so timed his run beautifully. Run anyway. 61 off 45 balls, steering WA to victory with three overs remaining. Peter Overton, in National 9 News. Damon Hill today became the first son of an ex-world champion to take out the Formula One Drivers' Championship. Hill needed just one point from the Japan Grand Prix to clinch the title. His rival for the crown, Jack Villeneuve, crashed. The race was won easily by the Briton for the Williams team, who a few weeks ago sacked him. An aborted start added to the tension. Coulthard's car stalling. Minutes later, they were away. Hill second off the grid, flies past Villeneuve. Alacy didn't do a lap. The very first corner. Berger went after Hill, but ended up damaging his car's front wing. Hill's team watched anxiously. Villeneuve was on the charge after dropping to eighth position. Yes! Hill's two pit stops went according to plan. He was out of the traffic and out in front. A rear tyre problem had Villeneuve in early. It didn't get fixed because minutes later the same wheel went past the young Canadian. Into the gravel trap. The tyre flew over the safety fence and into the crowd, but there was no reports of injury. Oh my goodness, I do have No matter what happened now, Hill was the new world champion, but he drove as though the title was still on the line. We are seeing history. Last lap, and Hill's wife Georgie was beaming. She's seeing her husband. One could only imagine Hill's sense of relief. Because I got a lump in my throat. Sacked from the Williams team, Hill was all class on the podium and in front of the microphone. I wanted to win the race for Williams, but if you don't mind, I'll take the championship myself.
Hill's sense of achievement, eventually winning the Drivers' Championship by 19 points, appeared far greater than any need for revenge. Golf and Australia has crashed down at the Alfred Dunhill Cup. The number two seed shock losers to New Zealand. Needing to win just one of the three matches to make the semi-finals, the Aussies were blitzed by 3-0 at St Andrews. Wayne Riley was never in the hunt against Grant Waite, losing by seven strokes. But Australia only needed to win one match against New Zealand to clinch a spot in the semi-finals. So when Steve Elkington lost to Greg Turner, the down-under duel became a shootout between Greg Norman and Frank Nobolo. He is playing some wonderful golf. Despite Scotland's foul weather, the shark was in his element, shooting a four under par 68. Oh, that's a fantastic golf shot. Look at that. But Nobolo became Norman's latest nemesis, a round featuring eight birdies bundling Australia out of the Dunhill Cup. Game set and match. Australian and Aston Villa goalkeeper Mark Bosnich could face criminal and misconduct charges after giving a Nazi salute during a game against Tottenham Hotspur. As the referee consults the linesman, Spurs fans can be seen reacting to Bosnich's salute, regarded as particularly offensive to Tottenham's large Jewish following. The Australian was booked and later apologised, but police interviewed Bosnich after the game and investigations are continuing. Spurs defeated Villa 1-0. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. In Ericsson Cup soccer, Marconi edged out Canberra, a draw between Gippsland and South Melbourne, and in the late match, Collingwood leads Melbourne 1-0. Netball and South Australia is the new national champion, defeating Victoria 61-41. to And Ian, pretty happy for Damon Hill today. Terrific result. Indeed, and wouldn't his dad have been proud? Sure would. Thanks, Ken. The weather is next, then testing our top bus drivers. But first, the pools. <coughs> A thoroughly delightful day in Sydney with a top of 22 in the city and 24 inland. The perfect spring conditions will continue into tomorrow with a top of 22 and 25 in the west. On the synoptic chart, a high near Adelaide is moving across New South Wales bringing more dry weather. Around the country tomorrow, afternoon storms in Darwin, a late shower in Perth, fine elsewhere. And looking ahead for Sydney, continuing fine until Thursday when there's the chance of afternoon storms. Just repeating the day's top story, police are still negotiating with an armed man at Engadine in Sydney's south. He's fired at police and has threatened two children who are being held hostage. We'll bring you the latest developments in news breaks during the evening. You may have wondered how bus drivers steer their monstrous machines through all that peak hour traffic without hitting anything. Today, some of Sydney's top drivers showed it takes plenty of skill and nerve as they were put through their paces at the state bus Rodeo. 28 drivers squeezed and coaxed their 12 and a half metre long vehicles through a tight obstacle course. Not everyone scored maximum points, but we're assured the witches hats don't represent pedestrians. The winner will compete at next month's national championships in Brisbane. And that's the news this Sunday night. I'm Ian Ross. Good night.